God bless, guys. Coach Timothy here. I pray that you've all had a wonderful week. Um, I'm here with a, another prophetic word uh, from the Lord. And uh, as with all prophetic words, you do want to make sure that you're taking the word to the Lord in prayer to make sure that it is a word that is meant for your life. If it resonates with you, um, that you receive instruction from the Lord of how to contend for the prophetic word that you're hearing. Um, you also want to make sure that you're testing the spirits to make sure that they are of God and not of the flesh and not of the enemy. Amen. So um, this is a good word. Um, and the word, the Lord actually gave me this word on May 1st. Um, so I um, didn't get a chance to uh, uh, upload this video until now, but I'm doing it today because the Lord wants me to get this word out. Um, so as with all of my videos, I'm going to um, begin with a prayer and then we'll get started. Amen. So, Father God, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord God, that you have allowed us, Lord God, to see this day, Lord God. We don't take it for granted. We don't count it lightly, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that you are allowing me to be able to impart this word to your people today, Lord God, to encourage them, to comfort them, to edify them uh, uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, that you would give them some sort of... Uh, revelation and direction for their lives, Lord God, concerning their their purposes, their destinies, uh, concerning your will for their life, Father. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, that you will touch every single listener under the sound of my voice, Lord God. Speak to them, Lord God, directly, Lord God. Let them not have itching ears looking for uh, different prophetic voices to listen to, but help them to have a firm foundation in you, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, that before any other voice that they hear your voice first. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray now that no weapon formed against me or this word shall prosper. And any tongue that rises up against me or this word in judgment, I condemn it now in the name of Jesus. Father, I decrease that you may increase in me, have your way, and you will get the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, guys. So um, the word uh, that the Lord gave me on May 1st is actually for the entire month of May. So the Lord says that this is manifestation may. Okay. I know many people have, you know, they always say, Oh, miracle may miracle. No, no, this is manifestation may. All right. And so, um, I've been on my journey with the Lord that, you know, I, I told you guys that the Lord called me to the prophetic in 2020. Um, well, he called me in 2019. I entered the wilderness in 2020. And so since then I've been keeping a journal and so May 1st literally made 1,400 days that I have been on on this process that the Lord has been having me go through. And so um, I, I decided, you know, let me see if that number is in scripture. And so what I found was that um, I didn't see it directly in scripture, but, um, but I did see it in the Hebrew and Greek concordance. And so what I did was I went to the Hebrew and Greek concordance and I saw that uh, what the words meant. But before I get to that, I want to go also to how that number is written in Hebrew. And so the number one or the, the first letter of the alphabet is Aleph in Hebrew. And so the second letter, uh, um, excuse me, the last letter of the alphabet is Tav. OK, so that's in the Hebrew. In the Greek, we know it as Alpha and Omega. So when I when you think about the Alpha and, and, and Omega, you know, the Aleph and the Tav, who, you know, the only person that we know that has that title is Jesus Christ. Well, what's cool about that word, about that, those two letters is when you put them together, they actually form a word. And the word that they form. Let me see, guys, I, I have to. um check here really quick um, the Bible verse. It's actually the, the, the word that they form is the, is the word et in Hebrew. Okay. So let me, I want to uh, get the Bible verse as it's written in Hebrew. I actually gave that word uh, on the, um, wow. Wow. <laughs> Uh, I actually gave that word on April 8th um, co uh, concerning the total solar eclipse. So if you haven't watched that video, you can go back and watch that video. Um, but the et, um, it, it, it's in the Hebrew, it's it's in the first verse of the Bible, Genesis 1 and 1. 
And so in Genesis 1 and 1, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, right? So in Hebrew, it's Bereshit bara Elohim et hashamayim ve'et ha'aretz, okay? So the word et, it's actually a particle. I'm, I'm speaking of grammar now, okay? It, it's a particle that is used in front of the direct object of a verb, in this case, the heavens and the earth, right? Indicating that these are what is being created, okay? So without the word et preceding the heavens and the earth, they couldn't have been formed, okay? I explained all of this in that um, April 8th video of the total solar eclipse, so go back and watch that video if you wanna have more explanation of what the et means. Um, but <clears throat> today, the Lord showed me that uh, well, on May 1st, the Lord showed me that again. So I'm going to talk about it again here now. So there is no actual English translation for that word et. Okay. So, but again, it's the, part of, uh, the, the particle sign of the accusative in grammar. Okay. So in other words, it is the word that gives momentum of manifestation to whatever word is coming after it. Okay. So... This, this word uses two letters, Aleph and Tav. In Greek, it would be the Alpha and Omega, like I said. And since Jesus said that he is the Alpha and Omega in Revelation, John called him the word that was in the beginning that was with God and was God. The very first scripture in the Bible shows that the Hebrew word used to describe Jesus was this word et, as I read it to you in Hebrew. Okay? So John 1 and 14 uh later goes on to say that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. In other words, that word manifested. That word et, alpha and omega, Jesus Christ manifested. So the word et um, is the word used to manifest. Okay? So um, the heavens and the earth in Genesis 1 and 1, Jesus is the manifester. So I'm just reading what I have here in my notes. So look at the letters to mean... Um, the Lord's covenant of abundance is sealed to join me together with it as a leader marked by strength. Now, how did I come to that? Because if you look at the, the every, every Hebrew letter has a translation, has a, a, a symbolism, has a, a, it represents something. And so the letter Aleph is normally the letter one, but it also is the letter 1000, okay, for the number 1000. So um, when you look in scripture, the Bible talks about um, thousands representing abundance, right? Uh, a thousand represents multitude. It, it represents an abundance. And so um, it also, the, the letter Aleph represents Adonai. So Adonai in English means Lord, right? So um, the, the Tav, which is the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet, that um, that represents many things. It represents a mark. It represents a seal. As like I said before, if you look at the April 8th video um, of this total solar eclipse that we had last uh, last month, you'll see that I talked about it there. But it also represents covenant. OK, um, it represents the end of something. It represents what is final. It represents the joining together of something. OK, so. um the Aleph also represents someone who leads. It represents, in other words, like the alpha male, the alpha woman, the alpha, you know, we hear those terms, right? Alpha. So it's someone who leads. And so um, that person is, is, it has strength. And so the Tav also, like I said, it represents a mark, being marked. And so that's how I came to that conclusion. The Lord's covenant of abundance is sealed to join us together with it as leaders marked by strength. Okay, so the Hebrew words, the uh, the Hebrew word that I found in the he, uh, the Hebrew concordance was actually the the Hebrew word gabar, and gabar means a, a man, but not just a man, particularly a valiant man, uh, or for lack of a better term, a warrior. Okay, so um, when I looked in the Greek concordance for um, that number 1,400, I came across the word dolos, and it means slave or servant, uh, someone who is subservient, okay? So 
as I was meditating on these uh, on these uh, concordance meanings, um, the Lord, you know, began to speak to me and to show me what he was saying about this month. And um, the 1,400th verse, let me say that again, the 1,400th verse of the Bible is Genesis chapter 46, verse 13. And it reads like this. It says, and the sons of Issachar, Tola, Huva, and Job, and Shimron. That's all it says. So when, when, whenever you see names, names are very important. Names give definition. They give identity. Um, you know, God told Adam, whatever you name them, that's what uh, the animals uh, in the Garden of Eden. He said, whatever you name them, that's what they will be called. That's what they that's what they are. Right. And so um, many people don't know that um, the name Issachar. It literally means a reward or recompense or someone who will bring a reward or someone who will give a recompense. And so um, the Lord began to minister to me about these uh, these names. OK, and so I'm just going to read to you what the Lord gave me. He also gave me in the New Testament. Um, the Lord gave me Luke chapter two, verse twenty nine. And it says this. It says, Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. Okay. So I'm going to read the word that the Lord gave for this month because it's pertaining to the servants of God, those who are ready to lead, those who are warriors, who have, who have fought well in the battle, who have fought well, um, in, in the war. And now, um, you're getting ready to be sent out. You're getting ready to depart. And this word peace in scripture in this particular scripture, Luke 2, 29, um, it doesn't just mean being at rest. It means prosperity. Okay. So I'm getting ready to get into the word, but I just want to give you guys an overall um, uh, synopsis of what this, what this, this prophetic word is about. Okay. So I'm going to read what the Lord gave me. He says, and he will bring a reward to the anointed and appointed children chosen. The worm that devours is blown away and scattered and the persecuted who weep are preserved and protected. Be circumspect to take heed to yourself as a keeper of the mark that narrowly observes, preserves and reserves yourself surely as one that waits and watches. So in other words, the Lord is saying here, he's saying, I'm about to give you a reward. I'm about to bless you. I'm about to give you what you've been asking me for. He's saying that the worm, remember the scripture talks about it. Uh, I can't remember if it's in Joel or not, but it talks about uh, the palmer worm, the canker worm, the caterpillar and the locust that he would take. He would remove them. And so the Lord is saying that the worm that devours is blown away. In other words, he has scattered them. He has removed them from your life. And so um, he says, and the persecuted who weep. You've been doing nothing but weeping, 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 weeping. As you've gone through your persecution, you've done a lot of weeping, a lot of weeping. Um, the Lord is saying that you have been preserved and now you are protected. Um, he's saying to be circumspect. That means to walk with caution, to walk, you know, to, to walk upright. Make sure that you are being um, astute in what your calling is. Um, to take heed to yourself as a keeper of the mark. The Lord has marked you. He's saying, watch over what over the mark that he has given, that he has put over on you. So that mark, he's marked you for blessing. He's marked you for good. He's marked you for favor. He's saying, take care of it. The calling that you're getting ready to walk in is going to require you to be uh, mindful of that mark. Okay. So he's saying, observe it, preserve it and reserve yourself. Okay. As one that waits and watches, you are a watchman. You are someone who um, not every single person is listening as a watchman, but uh, he's saying that you are being vigilant. You are being observant. Some of you are watchmen. Some of you are prophets. Some of you are uh, seers. Some of you are um, um, been called to the fivefold ministry, you know, teachers, evangelists, pastors, apostles, and so forth. And the Lord is saying that you've gone through the training. You've gone through what you were supposed to go through. So be watchful uh, and mindful of what he has marked you with, of the responsibility that he has given you, that he's bestowed upon you. So going on, the Lord says, 
of the time now when the lion came in to work wonderfully as the judge of God's presence of old that hastens to help the royal kings in trouble to make them suddenly amazed to be gotten speedily out of trouble. Um, so the Lord is saying that he's about to come in like the lion of Judah, Judah that he is. Um, and he's about to work wonders in your life. Um, not only as the lion of Judah, but as the judge. So the Lord, you are about to officially be judged by the Lord. Um, again, this is referring back to that April 8th video because I talked about judgment in that video of what the, the symbolism of the solar eclipse means. But the Lord is saying that your hour of visitation, this is when the hour of visitation is when you have been judged, is when you receive the Lord's um, the, the, the Lord's favor upon your life or the Lord's judgment upon your life, however you want to see it. Um, he's saying that now your hour has come to be helped. OK, why? Because you have ascended and been inducted into royalty. OK, as a joint heir, not only as a joint heir with Christ, but to be able to step into your purpose and into your calling. You've gone through the process of what it is that you had to go through in order to be able to get to this moment now where the Lord is about to bring you out of tr uh, out of trouble and he's about to do it suddenly. So much so that you're going to be amazed at how fast it's gonna happen, okay? So the Lord says, and the command was spoken to properly set up right the just, to be established, fixed, prepared, appointed, and rendered prosperous, confirmed for faithfulness, fitted, fixed and framed to meet the ordained preparation provided to make provision. You are about to receive your provision from the Lord. Okay. Um, the Lord is about to make you upright. He's about to set you upright. In other words, you've been in that posture, you know, maybe some of you have been in the posture of depression, a posture of, of weariness, a posture of giving up, a posture um, of prayer, like, you know, you're bowed in prayer. You've been in such a, a, a posture of prayer. The Lord is saying you're about to be set up because he has counted you to be just. He's counted. You have been justified by the Lord. He's about to establish you. You are about to be fixed, which means no one will be able to move you out of a place except for the Lord. Um, you are about to be prepared for your journey. You are about to be a, a appointed and rendered as prosperous. Why? Because you are you. The Lord is saying that He is confirming you for your faithfulness. You did not give up in your time of battle. You did not give up in the war. You did not give up going through the wilderness. You did not give up on your um, journey of transformation. The Lord is saying now that He has fitted you. He has fixed you. You have been framed, framed as in you know like a, a door frame. You have been framed permanently to meet the ordained preparation provided to make provision. God is about to give you the the provision that He has ordained for you to have. Okay. So he's saying, be ready, be ready to set a right fast, to be stable, established to stand by the very deed unto him. So the Lord is saying that what he, he get, be prepared to, to, to receive this provision that he's about to give you. Be prepared, not just um, um, you saying like, okay, God, I'm ready. No, he's saying, make the preparations. What preparations? The preparations that you need to make are the preparations that are pertaining to your destiny. You know what your purpose is uh, or, or what your destiny is. You know you have a destiny. You have to get yourself in position to receive what God is getting ready to give you. I spoke about that again on April 8th and that video. I keep telling you, go back and watch that April 8th video. All right. Um, he's saying that the, he's about to perform the deed. The very deed that he said that he's going to do. That's another video that the Lord gave me back in March. He said, the deed is yours. So go back and watch that video. Um, he says, I have found a certain person that was carried away captive and stripped to be revealed. You were that person. Okay. You were that person who was once in bondage. The Lord stripped you down, like completely stripped you down, bare, naked, so that you could be re so that your true identity could be revealed. OK, um, he says, appearing to go lead captives in captivity, departing to disclose and plainly publish the reveal without shame, showing and telling children that are afflicted as captives in bondage, separated from the celebrated. The, you are about to. <laughs> it's kind of like being a Moses. You were in bondage, you escaped that bondage, and now the Lord is sending you back. Remember, Harriet Tubman was also called Moses, right? So um, she was she escaped, escaped slavery, and then she went back and helped rescue three three hundred other slaves. Um, she was the Moses that was helping helping those to get out of what she was once in. That's what you're about to be doing. 
God, uh, that's a part of your purpose. The, what you've gone through is so that you can be able to help someone else come out of it as well. All right. Um, and you're going to be, a, a, you know, you are going to be that leader, that Moses is going to be doing that. And you're not going to have any shame about it. Like the, whatever the sins of your past or whatever it is that you were once in bondage with. Now that you have um, authority over you don't have to um, do it, uh, disclose it in shame. You don't have to publicly reveal it in shame um, because those people that God is going to have you minister to are going to be people who were once like you were, okay? Um, so you're going to be helping them so that they too can come out and be celebrated. You are about to be celebrated by the Lord. And so you're going to be helping others to come out so they too can be celebrated. So he says he will teach them how to know through observ observation and recognition instructions, designation for the punishment of acknowledging acquaintances with answers, being unaware to comprehend and consider if they could be cunning. So the Lord is saying you're going to teach them um, what you have learned. Basically, you've learned how to observe and how to recognize how to recognize um, cunning in other people. And you've learned and you've also recognized um, like when you've missed it, when you didn't recognize someone's cunning and the, the repercussions, the punishment that goes, the consequences that goes with it when you don't pay attention to someone who is cunning, someone who means evil, someone who doesn't mean you well, someone who has a, ulterior motives, things like that. You've learned how to discern all of those things. And you've also, um, the, the way that you've learned is through experiencing um, not discerning. <laughs> So it's like, if, I don't know if that makes sense. You guys have learned how to discern um, the, the wicked things through going through the experiences of being duped by them, right? So now you understand, now you know. You had to learn those lessons. You learned by experience. And so you're gonna teach others what you've learned by experience, okay? So he says, be diligent to discern if they be endued with familiar friends or familiar spirits, right? Being ignorant, kinsmen caused to come to have knowledge of how to make themselves known and learned of the lies of man. Um, so the Lord is saying, make sure that you are sharp in your discernment, um, discerning familiar spirits, discerning um, um, the, the things that are not of God. Um, he's saying, being ignorant, kinsmen caused to have come to not. So you were once ignorant and then you, you came into the knowledge of God. You came into the, 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 the knowledge and wisdom that can only come from the Lord by your experiences. And so the Lord is saying, make sure that you are um, um, walking in that type of discernment, the discernment that you've learned um, about people who lie, uh, liars, the deception of the enemy, um, things like that. Uh, the Lord is saying, why? Because you have been marked to perceive you have been marked to perceive. And like I said, and some of you, um, you don't have to be a prophet to prophesy. The Bible, uh, Paul said he wished that we would all prophesy, right? So, um, and, and he also tells us to despise not prophesying. So um, even if you're not a prophet, you still have that ability to prophesy. You have that, that ability to perceive. You have that ability to speak into someone else's life. And so what is prophesying? Prophesying is inspiration um, revealed, right? It's, it's speaking by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. It's speaking by the inspiration of God. It's speaking by inspiration um, that comes from above, that comes from the Lord. So, um, and also it, it's speaking um, those things that are in the spirit that you are calling them forth from your mouth into existence, right? That's a part of prophecy as well. So it says, um, and, and in doing so, you're gonna be regarded with respect as a man or woman of skill that teaches and has understanding and will be unto the royal kings now um, to take counsel and consult their interpretation. So you, you're going to be someone who's going to be dealing with like, so the Lord is now counting you and I and all of you who are under the sound of my voice watching this video who have gone through the process of being prepared for leadership. Um, the Lord is counting you as being royal, for lack of a better term. Um, the Lord is counting you, you know, we know that we are part of that royal priesthood and, you know, that we are kings and priests and things like that. So you are really stepped into that now, into that identity of being a king, of being a priest, of being um, uh, royal. 
And so the Lord is saying that now you're going to be ready to be able to teach um, understanding to, the, to those who are coming behind you, who are also going through the same process of becoming royal, of becoming kings and priests. Um, so, and, and you're going to consult them. You're going to give them counsel, wise counsel, godly counsel. Um, you're going to help them with their, with, their, uh, with their issues, with their problems, how they see things, their interpretation of life. Um, their interpretation of their situations. You're going to be able to help them through it because you've already gone through it. So going on, the Lord says, you are to stand out in May to have substance as you will in your kingly realm to reign and rule in dominion, having ascended the throne to be inducted into royalty. On whom is the wind and breath blown to touch you and make you of a quick understanding of the Holy One, God, to be pronounced clean and appointed, dedicated to God. So, in this month of manifestation, May, you are about to, uh, the things that you've been waiting on God to, to do in your life, you're getting ready to see them starting this month of May. So I'm not saying that everything is going to happen at once in May, but I am saying that the Lord is saying that you are getting ready to start to stand out. People are going to start taking notice of you. People are going to start paying attention to you. People are going to see you begin to accumulate. So whereas in the last season of your life, there has been subtraction, things have been taken away from you. Beginning this month of May, you're going to begin to see things being added to you, okay? Things of substance. Things, places, people of substance, okay? So you're going to start to see God begin to increase you, begin to enlarge you. Um, you're going to begin to see God move in your life um, to establish your realm here, here on earth um, as a king here on earth. Um, you are getting ready to reign and rule in, domin in dominion with authority, right? Um, as you lead, the Lord is setting you up in what your purpose is, and you're going to lead from that place. Um, why? Because he's getting ready to blow his breath upon you. He's getting ready to touch you with the breath of life. We know that his breath is the breath of life, right? His Holy Spirit is the breath of life. And so God is getting ready to, to, to make you quickly understand um, this touch that he's about to bring upon your life. You're going to know that you've been touched by the Lord. Okay. Um, and, and it's this, this reveal that you are about to experience because God is about to reveal you openly to everyone. Um, they're going to know and see that you've been cleansed by the Lord for lack of a better term, uh, a term, um, that you've been appointed and you have dedicated yourself to God. Okay. And so the Lord goes on to say this. He says, and in the time of warm days now presently is the required season and space of time where the weather is that of your father's desire for the prince or princesses, illumination and understanding to consider, to be made to act circumspect with intelligence as an expert that instructs how to prosper by dealing prudently and skillfully to have good success, teaching to have understanding and wisdom and behave yourself to consider wisely how to be guided wittingly by wisdom to be wise in the minds, words, and actions to show yourself as wiser. Like the skillful wisdom of God that was discovered in him. So, um, I just lost my place. Sorry. Okay. So, the time is now warming up, right? We are now entered into spring. Um, soon, next month already, we're getting ready to go into, into a summer. So over these warm, over these spring and summer months, like we got one more month of spring, um, you know, this month of May, June 21st begins uh, um, summer in our hemisphere, right? And so during this time, so in, in my mind's eye that, you know, over the next four months um, that you're going to begin to see um, God's desire for you. Um, be manifested, be made manifest. Um, illumination. Um, it, the, the, the Lord is about to highlight you. He's about to shine a light on you. And people are getting ready to see you um, for who he has transformed you into being. Um, and, and you are going to be made to act circumspect. Like I said, um, you're going to be recognized for your intelligence for what you've been through. You you have gained so much wisdom and understanding and knowledge and skill through what you've endured. And so now you've become an expert in that thing. 
And so now you're going to be, um, not only will you be an expert, but you're going to be an expert who can instruct others on how to prosper because you, the Lord is about to cause you to prosper and people are getting ready to see your come up. Okay. They're getting ready to see how <laughs> you went from having nothing to having an abundance of everything. And they're going to want to know how you did it. So you're going to show them how to reach prosperity because the way that you reached prosperity, the, re the way that you reached your goal, your purpose in life um, with affluence and with, you know, with the wealth that comes from above is through your relationship with God. Like you really, really buckled down and got close with the Lord. And so um, they're going to see that and then it's going to cause them to want to take that chance also to want to begin to uh, follow God in a more excellent way. You're about to become an example. I was watching a, um, a pastor the other day. He made the comment. He said that God is about to make you, um, uh, what did he say? How do you say it? Um, oh, he's, God is about to make you the evidence, right? Um, he says, you, God is not about to show you evidence. You are about to be the evidence. And that's what I'm saying to you guys. This month of May, beginning this month of May, going through the spring and the summer months, you are about to be recognized as being the evidence of God's handiwork. Like the work that God has done in your life is about to be the evidence that is going to bring souls to Christ. So you are about to become evidence. Amen. Um, so the Lord is saying, um, you're going to show them how to prosper. How? By dealing prudently. Prudently means to be cautious, right? So by dealing prudently and skillfully to have good success, teaching them to have understanding and wisdom, to behave themselves, to consider wisely how to be guided wittingly by wisdom. So wittingly by wisdom, the wisdom of God, to be wise, to be wise in what they think, in their words, in their actions, how to show themselves as being wise, right? Um, those, the skillful wisdom that can only come from God they ha uh, that, that we have discovered in the Lord, okay? You're going to be showing them how to discover that same wisdom that we have discovered in God, all right? So it says, whom the royal inducted into royalty set up to take counsel and consult began to reign and rule. Uh, like I said, some of you will be prophets um, and you will you know reign in that office as a prophet. Um, that protects and preserves as a servant. Some, you know, we're all servants, but some of you, like I said, whatever the Lord has called you to, be it a prophet, you know, teacher, evangelist, uh, uh, pastor, you know, apostle, um, bishop, whatever the case may be that the Lord has called you to, um, you're getting ready to reign and rule in that as a servant and, and an, as an heir of your father, who is the king of kings. Um, for why? Because the Lord is saying here, he says, I, your father, have raised you up to make you stand, set up to rise, accomplished and confirmed by decree as having endured the enemy in order to be enjoined to good and help to stand up, strengthened to succeed as a chief of rank and quality in abundance, exceedingly great as a man increased long enough to have many things as a mighty shipmaster multiplied as an officer prince in a sufficient process of time to be, okay, I'll stop there. Um, so the Lord is saying that he's raised you up. This is the time that you are about to be raised up. Like God is about to make you stand out. You're really about to stand out. You are about to be seen as someone who has accomplished the impossible. Okay. Um, you are about to be confirmed by the Lord and by his decree as having, as, as someone who has not only fought with Satan, fought with the devil, fought with the enemy, fought with the adversaries, but you overcame them, okay? Um, so that you could be able to be enjoined to the good that the Lord has for you, um, to the help that the Lord has for you. So when I say help, I mean the Lord's substance. I mean the, the Lord's provision um, so that you can be able to stand up, strengthen to succeed as a chief of rank. Now, when the Lord says of rank, um, the Lord uses rank in scripture. If you look um, in Genesis and dealing with Joseph, um, it, it talks about how Joseph went from, you know, basically the pit to the palace 
and that the Pharaoh made him second in charge. So that's a rank, right? Um, you look at Daniel, it talks about how Nebuchadnezzar made him uh, the second in charge, right? Um, then it goes on to talk about how his son after Nebuchadnezzar, um, uh, was it uh, Belshazzar, I think, Belshazzar, yeah, I think. Um, he made, it was Nebuchadnezzar's son. Um, he made Daniel um, over all of the, you know, the astrologers and um, the soothsayers, the wise men. And all. So there's rank and there's rank in heaven. So the angels have rank. So there's rank is very important to God. And so your rank, your status, your level of authority has been raised, has been like you've been brought up to leadership level. So you, 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 you went through the ranks. It's just like in an army. When you go through the ranks, you start out as a private, right? You know, you get, you rate, you go higher and higher in your ranks. And so that's what it is. You are, you have now succeeded in, in what you had to go through and that you are about to be elevated in your rank physically in the spirit. You've already elevated, but in physically, like in the, in the natural room here in the earth, you, people are got, about to see your come up, like how you've been raised up, how you've been elevated by the Lord. And so they're going to notice it because of the quality of the quality of abundance that you are about to, to receive from the Lord. Like it's really about to be enough that people are going to be like, oh my God, like mm, this person got this, like, wow, you received that. Wow. Where all this money come from? Wow. How did you get that? How did you get this? People are going to start noticing that God is doing, is moving in your life, um, you know, with material things, the spiritual things they've been seeing. But for them, people who are, who, who are not spiritually minded, who think worldly minded, they don't see the spiritual as being something that is also precious. But the material things will be proof to them to show them that God has done it. And it will cause them to be able to go on their own journey, which will lead to the enlightenment uh, enlightenment in their spirit man, as well as their natural man. Um, because the Bible tells us, you know, in Matthew six thirty three that we are to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, right? And then all the other things will be added unto us. And so, but people who are not spiritually minded, they see it the other way around. They see the material stuff first and then the spiritual things. But you are going to be the evidence that is going to cause them to embark upon that Matthew six thirty three um, journey. Okay. Um, and as a shipmaster, so in scripture, it talks about, uh, um, how shipmasters were people who were in charge of precious cargo. They were in charge of, uh, many things. It talks about when Solomon, let's go, uh, King Solomon, when, when he was building the temple, the Bible talks about how the, the ships of Tarshish, uh, and Tyre came and they brought things to him to help build like things of riches and things. So the shipmaster contains the riches. The shipmaster contains the, 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 the commodities, the, all of the material things, all of the, the precious gold and silver and all, all, everything that is precious, everything that is valuable. So the Lord has made you a shipmaster. He can trust you now with wealth. He can trust you now with um, provision. He can trust you now with material things. Why? Because you sought first his kingdom and his righteousness. Okay. And so, um, for many of you who are, um, stepping into the office of the prophet, um, the Lord is about to multiply you in, in a, in a, in a, like I said, in a sufficient process of time, and you're about to be multiplied over those people, over every psychic, over every, um, horoscopist, over everyone who, who, you know, is a professional astrologer, um, you are about to be, uh, uh, um, elevated above them. In other words, remember when the story of Daniel and the three Hebrew boys, when they, um, um, the king had a dream and no one could interpret it. And so he was like, I'm going to get rid of all of you guys, all the wise men and everyone. And so Daniel was like, yo, like, why is the king, you know, being so angry? He was like, look, give us 10 days, feed us, you know, no, don't give us any mo uh, any meat. Don't give us any wine. Just give us like fruits and veggies. Um, this is where people get that word, the Daniel fast from, but the Daniel fast is not a, a actual fast. That's a whole different topic. But um, that's where it came from. That's where they get it from because he just, he ate 
the things that grew of the earth. Okay. But, um, the Bible says that they became 10 times greater. They became, became 10 times better than um, the soothsayers and the, the, the wise men and the astrologers and all of that, you know, um, fortune tellers and whatnot. And so for many of you who are operating in the prophetic, you are about to be elevated above that so that people will see truth and not a lie. That people will understand because, you know, we know that even psychics and things like that, they can prophesy accurately, but they don't use Jesus Christ as the door. They use divination. So Jesus Christ, uh, Jesus said that if he says, I am the door, if any man comes into me, you know, uh, comes in through me, that he shall be saved and he shall go in and out and find pasture. And if a man comes in any other way, then that man is a thief and a robber. So Jesus is the, is the only conduit through uh, to the spirit realm. And so um, he's saying that if you go and you use it through any other way, so I don't know who I need to say this for, but if, you know, if you've been looking at horoscopes and things like that, that is not of God. So um, astrology and all that stuff is not of God. Um, listening to psychics, tarot cards and things like that. Um, necromancy, cartomancy, which is like reading cards, but uh, playing cards. Um, none of that stuff is of God. So the Lord is saying, you know, you're about to be elevated above that. This is to the prophetic people. Okay. So, um, but the Lord is saying, Abba is saying that he is going to cut off and destroy the soothsayers um, decided by decree. In other words, he's going to stop all of the falsehoods, you know, all of the, the false prophets, all of the false um uh, all of the psychics, all of the soothsayers, all of those who operate outside of the Lord's will, outside of Jesus Christ. All right. Um, I'm almost finished, guys. Really quickly. The Lord's saying that this is what we have been saying to the Lord. So now the Lord is giving me this word from our perspective. This is what we have been saying to God. She says, Master, I am in bonds. Immediately at this present time, forgive me. Loose and set me at liberty to depart your bond servant to be dismissed, released and sent away at peace and rest with prosperity speedily as pertaining to touching me charitably by your own words spoken, poured forth and commanded. So this has been our prayer. This has been many of our prayers. We've been crying out to the Lord that we've been feeling bound. We haven't been able to move forward yet. Um, we haven't been able to step into destiny because we haven't received the provision. We haven't received the promises that God has promised us. And so the Lord, um, he put this here for a reason. He gave me this word for a reason. Um, it's because he's saying that this is what is getting ready to happen. He's about to set you loose. <laughs> you are about to depart and you're about to depart with prosperity. You're about to depart to be at rest. You're about to depart to uh, be at peace. And it's about to happen quickly. Okay. It's about to happen quickly. Now, quickly, you know, it could be four months. It could be four days. It could be four weeks. I don't know. But when the Lord says speedily, I know that it means there's something is, 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 is momentum is gaining on what the Lord has promised you. It's, it's becoming, it's coming forward. And so um, it says as pertaining to touching me charitably, charitably, we know charity when you give to charity is when you give money, you give money donations, right? Charity, uh, charity itself can also mean love as we know in, in uh, first Corinthians, right? It's either first Corinthians or second Corinthians. Um, so the Lord is giving you the prosperity, showing you his love. He's doing it to show you his love. He's doing it to show you that he keeps his word. He's doing it to show you that what he told you will come to pass. Because Isaiah 55 and 11 says, so shall my word go forth and it will not return to me void, but it will prosper. Uh, um, and wait, it, what is it? Uh, so shall my word go forth and it shall return, it will not return to me void. Uh, but it will accomplish, it will accomplish that which I please and it will prosper where to I send it. Okay. So whatever the Lord has spoken of your life, it has been performed. It has been performed. It has been done. You are about to see, um, the promises of God be made manifest in your life. Lastly, the Lord says then no more like when I was a servant bound. So this is still us speaking to the Lord. Um, no more like when I was a servant bound. Yea, nevertheless, otherwise different beyond a bond servant. 
a united brother, dearly beloved to be a friend, fond of embracing judgment and deliberate assent of, of the will as a matter of principal duty and propriety in the heart and mind as a friend, especially to myself. Now then, how many more things better, especially to you, even upon the carnally minded flesh that swept clean are also likewise by the Lord. So the Lord is saying here, this is what we've been saying, also professing to God. God, um, when I was bound at one point, but now I'm no longer bound. So because I'm no longer bound, I have been joined to you as a friend of God. I have been joined to you, Lord God, through your judgment. I have embraced your judgment upon my life. I have, I have embraced uh, um, your approval, right? Um, I've gone through the approval process. Um, that's what to, to, uh, the word assent mean, A-S-S-E-N-T. It means the official approval and agreement. So he says, I embrace the judgment and the agreement in order to be approved by God um, of the will. So your will, remember your, your mind contains your will, your intellect, and your emotions. So your will was to do the will of the Father. And so it says, as a matter of principle, duty, and propriety, what is propriety? It means to conform to conventional standards and morals. So in other words, you cleaned yourself up. You cleaned up your life for the Lord. You got yourself together, not only uh, physically, but also in your heart and in your mind. Your mind is your, where your soul is housed, your heart, your spirit. So in your spirit, you got your spirit in alignment with your with your soul so that you could be able to, to have... Uh, more uh, better things from the Lord so that you can be able to do better things from the Lord. You're saying now, God, I cleaned this house is what you're saying. Lord, I cleaned this house. So where's the promise? Where, 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 so how, how am I still in this situation? How am I still going through this? The Lord is saying that he's about to change all of that. You, you're about to experience his goodness because you cleaned up your life, because you got yourself together. And so you are about to receive uh, many blessings from the Lord starting this month. This is the month of manifestation. Okay. So that is the word, guys. This is manifestation May. And you are about to begin to see the manifestation of the Lord in your life. Um, I pray that this word blessed you. Take it to the Lord in prayer to make sure that it is a word for your life specifically. And... Um, yeah, guys, if you haven't already, do me a favor, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel, please, so that you can get notifications of when I'm uploading a video or going live. Hit the notification bell and subscribe now. Come on, do it, do it. I'm going to wait. Okay, cool. Thanks. All right. So, guys, um, be on the lookout for my videos. I go live on Mondays um, in between 8 and 9 p.m., as the Lord leads me, I'm, I think I'm going to go on at nine o'clock on Monday again. Um, I do intercessory prayer. So if you have uh, prayer requests, be sure to join me at 9 p.m. Uh, on uh, here on, on YouTube. Um, yeah, so that you can, you know, leave your prayer request and I'll pray for you. And uh, I pray that all of you have a blessed weekend. And until the next time, take care and be blessed.